Pikmin. It's not as recognizable as Mario or a Zelda, but it's certainly one of Nintendo's most unique franchises. You grow and manage little vegetable creature dudes who aid you in battle, help you solve puzzles, and collect name brand items in Nintendo's rendition of a real-time strategy set in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and I can't get enough of it. So, with the announcement of Pikmin 3 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch, we said, hey, let's take a look back at the history of Pikmin. Like many of Nintendo's most beloved games, the mastermind behind Pikmin was Shigeru Miyamoto. In an interview with The Telegraph, Miyamoto recounts as he was getting older, he started to grow an interest in gardening, and when he saw a line of ants marching past his feet and into the grass carrying leaves, he imagined what it might look like if they were tiny people. He said, quote, When we think about video games, we always have the idea of a start and a goal, and it's like a race between individual players. Who can make it and who won't? And I thought, why does it have to be a competition? Why can't everyone just move together in the same direction carrying things as a team? Who made the rules in the first place anyway? You tell him, Miyamoto. Now, the idea for Pikmin wasn't perfected from the start. Originally, he had an idea for a game called Adam and Eve, where two humans develop life, and you as the player is the godlike character. Now, your actions could help them love or make them fight, but either way, there was potential for them to have children and populate an entire planet, which kind of sounds like Miyamoto's The Sims, basically. That would sweet. I would have played that. Ultimately, the idea was deemed too uninteractive, so it was shelved. But the one thing Nintendo really wanted to push was how the new GameCube hardware could produce 100 plus AI on the screen at a time. At Space World 2000, Nintendo showed off a tech demo for what was known as Super Mario 128. In it, 128 Mario characters were all simultaneously on screen carrying objects around. Super Mario 128 never materialized, but the tech was definitely used for Pikmin. The original Pikmin came out close to the launch of the Nintendo GameCube in 2001. In it, you play as Captain Olimar, whose ship is hit by a meteor, causing him to crash land on an unknown planet that happens to look a whole lot like Earth. With his ship in utter disarray and only 30 days to restore it before his support runs out, he must partner up with the strange walking plant creatures that inhabit the planet. They're unquestionably loyal to the point that they'll sacrifice themselves to fight monstrous insects, collect treasure, and generally do all of Olimar's bidding. Each color Pikmin has its own strengths. Red are strong and fire resistant, yellow are light and can be thrown further, and blue can swim. Pikmin ultimately did pretty well both critically and commercially, so a new Pikmin game was put into development. In fact, it was confirmed in the December 2002 issue of Japan's weekly Playboy magazine by Miyamoto himself. That's right, they had a game section alongside very well written articles too. Pikmin 2 was released two years later in 2004 and built on the core formula by adding tons of new additions. The story takes place immediately after Pikmin 1, which is a rare occurrence in Nintendo games as they usually don't carry on narratives between sequels. Olimar makes it back to his home planet of Hokotate, only to find out that the company he works for, Hokotate Freight, is in massive debt because Louie, a fellow employee of the company, lost a major shipment of golden pick pick carrots to a space bunny. Did you get all that? Turns out the souvenir Olimar brought back for his son is worth more than a year's salary on Hokotate. So, the president of the company instructs Olimar and Louie to head back to the planet Olimar was just stranded on to collect enough treasure to pay off their 10,000 Pocos debt. Dude didn't even get to say hello to his wife and kids. It's messed up. So now there are two characters you can control in Pikmin 2, Olimar and Louie and this added some complexity to the management gameplay of the game. Olimar can have a group over on one side doing something, while Louie has another, and you can swap between them with the tap of a button. A couple of other new additions are the no day limit, and a new cave system with multiple sub floors, where time stops, but you can only use the Pikmin you took with you. There are also new Pikmin added, purple Pikmin who are strong but heavy and slow, and white Pikmin who are immune to poison and can dig up buried treasure, but are weak in battle. Nintendo also added a two player mode and a challenge mode where you, joined by a specific number of Pikmin, collect as much treasure as you can within the time limit. Pikmin 2 was well received, with many praising for its new additions 
and the removal of the day limit. It was another hit for Nintendo. A sequel seemed imminent, but instead, Pikmin took a long slumber. Pikmin 3 went through a variety of iterations before becoming what it is today. At first, a Pikmin game was being made for Nintendo's handheld like the Game Boy Advance, but Miyamoto deemed the hardware too weak for a Pikmin game. Development then shifted to the Wii. This was first hinted at in 2007 during an interview with IGN. Shigeru Miyamoto told the site, Quote, I certainly don't think we've seen the last of Pikmin. I definitely would like to do something with them, and I think the Wii interface in particular is very well suited to that franchise. In 2009, however, Nintendo released the New Play Control series, which was basically adding Wii remote support to GameCube games. And the first two Pikmin games were part of that lineup. Oddly enough, Pikmin 2 was released with all the other games in every region except for North America, where it was held until 2012. Hmm. Anyways, some tiny gameplay and graphical tweaks were made, but the biggest thing was that you could use motion controls to play the game. This allowed you to be more precise with your aim and even move the cursor further. These ports were also released on the Wii U eShop, meaning technically you could play Pikmin 1 and 2 in HD right now if you have a Wii U. Going back to Pikmin 3, not much else was heard from the game other than the confirmation of its existence in 2008, but at E3 2011, it was revealed that Pikmin 3 would be coming to Nintendo's next home console, the Wii U. Miyamoto stated that the HD visuals and gamepad were a better complement to the series, which is why it moved. Pikmin 3 also continues the story started in the first two games, which, again, is uncommon for a Nintendo franchise. But given that this title was released nine years after Pikmin 2, Nintendo changed it up enough for newcomers to understand what's going on. Just like the title implies, Pikmin 3 had three protagonists, Elf, Brittany, and Charlie, and they're all from the planet Kopai. Due to a booming population and lack of planning, Kopai is left with a major food shortage. So they send scout vessels to look for resources on other planets. And while the situation seems dire, the crew manages to find food on what they dub PNF404, the now official name of the planet from all three Pikmin games. Unfortunately for them, their ship, the SS Drake, crash lands and the three need to reunite. If only there were native creatures to the area willing to help them. Pikmin 3, like Pikmin 2, is similar to its predecessor at its core, but adds a ton of new things while changing others. The game's day limit is now based on how much fruit you collect, as you need to consume it at the end of every day. Run out of fruit, and uh, you're dead. Pikmin now hit specific body parts, so certain enemies were given weak spots. Enemies retain their damage taken overnight, so if you don't finish a battle before the day ends, it's no biggie. And now all the Pikmin onions are merged into one versus the three onions from previous games. The game also features a two-player bingo battle and a mission mode where you finish specific challenges like collecting treasures or defeating enemies within a time limit. Mission mode also received paid DLC in the form of remixed and new missions. Purple and white Pikmin were removed from the main game and instead we were introduced to two new Pikmin, Rock the best chonker boys in town and Winged. Rock Pikmin literally look like rocks and are strong in battle while also being able to break glass and crystal. Winged Pikmin are weak in battle but can fly, pull things out of the ground, and avoid all elemental hazards on the ground. Purple and white Pikmin could be found in the game's other modes, bingo battle and mission mode. The game also had a handful of control schemes to accommodate Nintendo's various controllers, like the Wii U gamepad, the Wii U Pro Controller, and the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, but no matter what you chose, you still needed the gamepad as the map and inventory. Pikmin 3, like its predecessors, was received well critically and sold well uh, for the Wii U. Shortly before the launch of Pikmin 3, Miyamoto announced that he was working on a Pikmin cartoon. Miyamoto said the idea of these cartoons came when he was trying to give more life to the Pikmin characters. While it didn't make its target 2013 air date, three original Pikmin short movies were screened at the Tokyo International Film Festival in October 2014, before making their way to the 3DS and Wii U eShops a month later. Now, remember earlier when I said Miyamoto deemed the handheld hardware too weak for Pikmin? Well, as it would turn out, Nintendo made a handheld one anyways, but Except it wasn't really like Pikmin. Like, a little. It has Pikmin, but it's not. It's not like the others. 
In 2017, Hey Pikmin, a 2.5D puzzle platformer, was released for the Nintendo 3DS. Not much is publicly known about the development of the game, but it was the first Pikmin game not developed internally by Nintendo, instead being handled by a company named Arzest, which also did the 3DS versions of Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and Poochie and Yoshi's Wooly World. This game's story is separate from the others, with Olimar yet again crash landing on an unknown planet, except this time the ship just needs fuel instead of pieces. So it's up to Olimar and the Pikmin to collect 30,000 sparklium so he can return home. Oh, listen doc, I tore a hole in the gas tank when I was landing, so we're gonna have to patch it up and get some gas. You mean we're out of gas? Yeah, it's no big deal, we got- the game is linear and you mostly moved right, and instead of growing and managing Pikmin, you only use the Pikmin you find in each level. The game had no day system, allowing you to take as long as you need, and throwing the Pikmin was done by using touch controls. Olimar was a little more versatile in this game thanks to a jetpack and the ability to swim, but Pikmin were still the ones doing all the legwork. The game released with a Pikmin amiibo figure and amiibo functionality that allowed you to scan in characters like Mario and the Inklings as treasure you can collect for Sparklium and even read Olimar's thoughts about them. In Japanese, Olimar is an anagram for Mario, so they have a stronger bond than you might think. The game was met with mixed reception due to its simplistic gameplay and, you know, not being a fully fledged Pikmin game. It didn't help that the game was released in summer 2017, right after the Nintendo Switch had come out. And that's the last of Pikmin. Until now. Sort. In August 2020, Nintendo revealed that Pikmin 3 Deluxe would be heading to the Nintendo Switch on October 30th, 2020. On top of everything mentioned about Pikmin 3, this new Deluxe version allows you to play the entire game co-op, has new difficulty modes, includes all the DLC from the original game, introduces a new prequel and epilogue starring Olimar and Louie, and brings in the Piclopedia, which, like an encyclopedia, gives you the rundown on creatures and plants you've discovered in-game, as well as thoughts from the crew members about them. You could even unlock in-game badges, <laughs> achievements, <clears throat> from meeting certain conditions like Log 10 Piclopedia entries. And that's about it for the main Pikmin games. Captain Olimar and the Pikmin have appeared in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, 3DS, Wii U, and Ultimate as a playable character and had a role in Brawl's story mode. In Smash 3DS, Wii U, and Ultimate, Elf is an alternate costume for Olimar, and Olimar got his own Smash Amiibo figure. There's also a Pikmin minigame that was included in Nintendo Land, the minigame launch title for the Wii U. On top of that, Pikmin make a fun little appearance when you transfer data from a DSi to a 3DS, or a Wii to a Wii U. In terms of the future of this series, well, we know, but we don't know. On September 17th of 2015, yes, five years ago, Miyamoto told not Playboy, but Eurogamer that Pikmin 4 was very close to completion. He also said we can confirm that Pikmin 4 is in development, but that is all we can confirm at the present. At E3 2017, Miyamoto confirmed again to Eurogamer that Pikmin 4 was still progressing, but that's the last we heard from it. Maybe it's still in development. Maybe it's been scrapped. Maybe the Pikmin 3 Deluxe sales will help Nintendo gauge interest. Who really knows? Anyways, thanks for joining us on this expedition through the history of Pikmin. Let me know in the comments why your favorite Pikmin is the rock Pikmin. Tell me in a haiku or a, a poem. Tell me, just tell me why the rock one is the best one because it is the best one. For everything Pikmin related, keep it here at GameSpot. See you later. Look how good these are. Look how good. Look how good my Pikmin are. Okay.